Presidential Tax Force PTF on COVID-19 has extended the gradual easing of the lockdown by two weeks. The PTF chairman and secretary to the government of the Federation, SGF Boss Mustafa, announced this on Monday during briefing by members of the tax force in Abuja, the nation's capital. According to him, in spite of the modest progress made, Nigeria is not yet ready for full opening of the economy and tough decisions have to be taken for the good of the greater majority. The PTF chairman also disclosed that the measures, exemptions, advisories and scope of entities allowed to reopen under phase one of the East lockdown shall be maintained across the Federation for another two weeks, effective from 12 midnight of May 18 to June 1. The lockdown order in Kano State, according to the SGF, has also been extended by another two weeks. Joining us live by telephone is Ayo Ademuli, local practitioner, to talk more on this. Thank you, Mr. Ayo, for joining us. Uh, good evening. It's a pleasure to be on air with you. The Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 just extended the phased easing of lockdown by two weeks. Do you consider this a step taken in the right direction, Mr. Ayo? Well, it, it, arguably, it was clear that uh, the relaxed lockdown will be extended for two reasons. Uh, overall, if you look at it, the statistics that we have, uh, the casualty rate in Nigeria is uh, just at 180 cases thus far. That is quite a far cry from the huge casualty figures that we are seeing in Europe and America. But also at the same level, is the fact that there are a lot of, um, of measures are being put in place you know, uh, by people, and uh, most importantly, uh, the last two weeks have seen record of commercial activities bouncing up in Lagos and Ogun State, and particularly FCC. Uh, but for the other part of the country, uh, the total nationwide lockdown is still in force. And then Kano State in particular, still has that total lockdown still in force. So the next question is now that, are we responding adequately to what we have? Without uh, any ad, what we are having in Nigeria is not an epidemic. With 180 figure, uh, cases, it's not an epidemic uh, situation. Not going to talk of a pandemic uh, situation. Yeah, so you now yeah, have a situation where we are more, more, more or less crying, uh, being more than the bereaved. And thus far, with all the, within the period of the lockdown, there has not been any concrete healthcare infrastructure solutions put in place. Not one single, not one uh, new hospital has been, uh, has been built by any level of government since this lockdown has been, has been imposed. In fact, for some of us, we regard the reaction of the Nigerian government to the COVID-19 situation as a pandemic. Oh, we have seen... Mr. Demilui, uh, Mr. Demilui, let me interject here. Yes, Mr. Demilui, let me interject here. Nigerians were expecting the president to address them, but it later turned out it was done by the presidential tax force. What, what's your reaction to this? I didn't get that. Nigerians were expecting the president to address them tonight on the state of COVID-19, but it was done by the SGF. The, the, the chairman of the PTF, what, how do you react to this? Uh, well, the absence, the uh, failure of uh, President Mahmoud Buhari to address Nigerians today is a complete drawback. Uh, a lot of Nigerians were expecting the president uh, to address them in person. And uh, the, 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 the date, I mean, since the time we are speaking, there is no clarification. There is no clear details as to why the president could not address us in person. And that is also uh, another uh, demonstration of the secrecy with which this, this regime is operating uh, on one hand, and then the approach, the uh, lack of collective approach to the issue of COVID-19. Now, the fact is that COVID-19 itself it's just a demonstration of the collapse of our healthcare sector and many other uh, lack of governance in all areas of life in Nigeria. So instead of uh, approaching this issue in a comprehensive manner in which we rebuild our health sector holistically to combat malaria, typhoid fever, and even lassa fever, which are COVID, 
in their own uh, regard, based on medical analysis. But we are now seeing isolated concentration on COVID-19, which is at least a global pandemic, but has not reached a, a, an epidemic level in Nigeria. So it's more or less like an HIV patient treating addicts. Finally, That's Mr. Ademilu, finally, before I let you go mm -hmm. off tonight, what do you expect the federal government and each state to improve on during this period? Very well. As a lawyer, I want more respect for democratic rights and extant constitutional uh, provisions. For instance, what we are seeing in River State is more or less bastardization of the constitution and even all known precepts of rule of law, where the governor, uh, Yonson Wike, has turned himself to a one man dictator, so to speak. We want an end to that. But number two is that we want uh, also an improved uh, uh, infrastructure development, especially in terms of health care. We need to upgrade health care facilities across the, across the country. If you are having an, uh, the, a global pandemic and we are not able to resolve even uh, little known sicknesses, then we must be kidding in this part of the, this of the world. Then finally, it's on the issue of uh, sup food supply chain. We are, a lot of people are under lockdown. How are they fearing? Is there distribution of key supplies to them, food, fuel, and, uh, and uh, even, uh, uh, you know, all, all necessary supplies that are necessary for welfare and all of that. That is missing. So we are seeing a situation where the Nigerian people are left to their fate by this, uh, by this situation and by their government. Legal practitioner Ayu Ademiluyi, thank you for your time and for your contribution. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.